How to create the dynamic shadow effect in Adobe After Effects without any plugins. Now, this is a very cool looking effect and believe it or not, you can create this in After Effects without any plugins. Many things in After Effects need plugins, but this one you can create without any additional plugins. And on top, the text will stay editable so you can go in and create diff different iterations of full intro animation, kinetic text animation for your videos. So let's take a look how it's done. All right, we're in our composition here and I've created the text already. And uh, for this to look nice, you actually should use a serif text, which will give you a couple of interesting angles for the shadows. If you have a non-serif font, it might not look as appealing as it does with this type of font. So the font that I use here, it's called Sinzel or Sinzel, I'm not sure. This looks very much like Trajan, the movie font, if you re remember that. So look for Trajan and or Trajan Pro. With this text here, it's, it's a regular text asset. And the first thing we need to do, we need to actually switch the color from fill to stroke, okay? It will give us shadows within the text body as well. That's actually helpful to sell this effect. And what I've done, I've given this a three pixel stroke width. That's actually something that you can adjust to your liking. I think this uh, actually works. And we're gonna composite the text on top of the shadow as well. So it should be a little thicker, not too thin, okay? And the important thing here is the color should be a little brighter than the actual shadow later on. So what I did, I selected this color right here and I've set this to 80% brightness. And this is giving us this light gray tint. So the first thing we need to do, we're gonna have to apply an effect and that's the fill effect, okay? And this one is important so we can composite it on top and the fill effect actually gray as well with a 50% brightness like this. And now we're gonna apply the radial fast blur, which is actually creating that shadow and it's working here already. And for the amount, in this case, we're gonna set it to 85. If you crank this up all the way to 100, it will actually reach the edge of the canvas, which we don't want in this case. So set it to 85 and then set the zoom value to brightest. You see that it does actually give us these li nice little, these nice shades of shadows here inside and outside, and that's actually exactly what we want, okay? And the last thing that we want to do, we, we want to add a CC composite, which is this, which will then take the actual text and composite it on top, which gives the impression of an extrusion of this text. Okay, when I toggle this on and off, without the shadow and the fill, it's actually all the same color. It doesn't look very deep when zoomed in a little bit. When I toggle this on and off, this actually gives us the impression of an extruded text, a little bit of depth. And then behind this, as if there was a light source on the other side of this text, okay? So that's actually what we wanna work with here. And for the movement, we're gonna use a helper, a helper null, so go to layer, new, null. And now within the text layer, twirl open the, the effects, go to CC radial fast blur. And now we wanna pick whip the center position. Do you see this? How this value actually determines the angle of the shadow, but we want this to be dynamic, okay? So we can move it around. So head over to the null, twirl open the position value or hit the P key to bring up the position value. And now, we wanna pick whip the center value to the position of the null, okay? And I actually had hidden the null here, you can't see it, and for that you have to activate this toggle mask and shape path visibility, a very long name for this icon, but when you activate it, it's, it's back again, okay? Now that we have everything set up, take this pick whip icon here and drag it all the way up to the position, all right? What this does now is that it actually follows the position, oh, hang on. What this does now, select the, the null, and when you drag it now, you can see that the shadow is going to, or the light source actually, is going to follow the position of the null, okay? And when you now animate this, we're gonna not, we're not gonna do that for, for this now. It's really just a matter of setting keyframes here, and then move it over, and then set it here, and you know the drill, okay? Pretty easy to do, and Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and animate this. And that's basically how you would go by animating this null. Then it will actually animate this shadows. This is 
looking very nice. You would think that's it's, that it's something that it's done with a plugin or something, but no, you can do this with onboard tools with After Effects, as you've seen with just a couple of clicks. So what did we do? To recap, we added this text object when we disable all effects. That's this plain text object. We switched from fill to stroke over here like this. Give it a decent thickness, three in this case. And then we added a fill. On top, we added the CC radial fast blur, which is actually creating these sh these shadows. Set the amount to 85, set the zoom value to brightest, and then added the CC composite to bring forward that text again, which is then actually giving us this complete ex extruded shadow effect, okay? And that's basically it. That's the dynamic shadow effect in Adobe after effects and the beauty of this is you can go in you can change the text animate it again and it's working just as expected the text is fully editable this could as well actually be a mograph template for premiere pro now that i'm now that i'm <laughs> thinking about it so maybe if you want put it into the comments if you want this as a mograph template i will gladly put a download link into a new video and um, put this out as an editable premiere pro template so this is the dramatic shadow effect in Adobe After Effects with just a few clicks. I hope you learned something new. I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, please consider hitting the like button, which would help me big time promoting my tutorials. And that being said, I will see you in the next tutorial.